Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online build video with me, Sherman. Today, guys, I bring you something completely new, something completely different than what I normally do, and that is another DPS build. Wow, Sherman, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I get tired of making solo builds and I get tired of making PvP builds, and I really wanted to bring something new to the table that I think a lot of people might find really fun to play. This is more of something for dungeons. You can use it in trials. I don't know how effective it would be in trials, but it is something that you can play in trials. Um, but as you can see, it is called The Bard. And this is a DPS support build. It offers some support, it offers DPS, and it, I haven't tested it with what I have now, so it might actually do a little bit more damage. Uh, We'll find out when we do the rotation, so. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the build. Starting with what race we are. We are a Wood Elf. Wood Elf is by far, hands down, the best for this. Now, a lot of people say, but Red Guard gets the Adrenaline passive. Yes, they do, but they do not get the amount of recovery that this build needs in order to be effective. You have to have really good stamina recovery for it to work really well, so. Um, going over the stats, you can see 11k magic, I'm not worried about it. 18k health, 30k stamina, with a 1673 stamina recovery. We do have weapon damage coming in at 3033. No, I know kind of low. The weapon critical, 44% buffed up, we get up to 54%. The crit's not super high, you could use advancing Yodokai um, with this, but I really wouldn't recommend it. It's it doesn't improve it by much, to be honest. Um, spell and physical resist, kind of low. We are an, a, a warden, so, and we are in medium armor, so it's not going to be really high. We are using the Lover Mundus Stone, and we do have Dubious Cameron Throne. You can use uh, the Warrior Mundus Stone if you want, if you have another way of getting extra pin. But because of testing purposes, I wanted extra penetration, so I used the Lover Mundus Stone for that. Going on to the gear, we are using Dubious Cameron Throne as our food. Um, the reason why is because we need that extra recovery and we need that max health, max stam, but that recovery comes in really well. If you can get the food that gives you max health, max stam, health recovery, and stam recovery, that's a better food for this build, even in dungeon play and trial play. Moving on, you do want to get power pots. The Power Pots give you Stamina back, they give you Stamina Recovery, they give you Major Brutality and Major Savagery. The Major Brutality Major Savagery help uh, sustain that, because you have skills that also give you those, but, well, you'll see. <laughs> Alright, now, getting into the gear itself. We are running Selene's with this. You can use whatever monster set that does really good Stam damage, uh, physical damage. I just find Selene really fits the Warden. So I just like it. And as you can see, this thing has a 15% chance to deal damage with a bear. So that's kind of cool. And it does 15,720 physical damage. And the effect can happen every 4 seconds. So this thing can go off a lot. Um, if you can get it to proc. But you have to deal direct damage. So that's one of the problems with it is it is a direct damage thing. The next set we're running is Griffin's uh, Jack. Now, a lot of people are going to say, wouldn't, you know, Advancing Yodokai be better and you could use Trap Beast, but the problem is, is that if you do that, you have to give up other things and it doesn't work out as well. This one is really good because after dealing direct damage, gain minor force and minor expedition for three seconds, increasing critical damage done and movement speed by 10%. So the critical damage, the minor force is what this set's really about. And that minor force really does good on this build. The next set we're running is Powerful Assault. And the reason we're running Powerful Assault is mainly because it's a support set. It does give you max health, it does give you max damage, it gives you some weapon damage, but when you cast an Assault ability, you increase the weapon and spell damage of up to four friendly members within 10 meters of you by 164 for 15 seconds. Now, in Trials, not that great. In dungeons, great set because this applies to everybody in the group. It gives your tank, your healer, and your other DPS and yourself 164 extra weapon and spell damage. So if you're running with a healer who's running Olorims, who gives major courage, this gives kind of like a minor courage 
in that sense that it gives you both the weapon and spell damage. It's a really good support set. <clears throat> so, I know this is very similar to another healer that I play, my Stam Healer build, but this one in particular really works um, better for DPS. And for some reason, after testing it and testing it and testing it, I find this to be the best setup. Now, I did change my skill layout for this build to make it more DPS orientated, and we'll get to that. But on the, to the traits and the enchantments, we are running three tri stats. You do need those three tri stats. If you do not have those three tri stats, you do not reach the health pool that you need for this build to be viable. Um, you'll have 16k and you don't want 16k health you want that 18k health to be really good and as you can see we still have a 30,000 stamina so we're still really good on that we are running stamina enchants on the smaller pieces all divines gear here guys going on to the jewelry we are running two infused with weapon damage one bloodthirsty with stam recovery now why didn't I put a weapon damage here we need that extra stam recovery I know that a lot of people are going to say, but if you put an extra weapon damage here, you're going to do more DPS. Yes, it's true, but we have that 164 here to make up that difference. So, I know this would give me 174, but this gives me 164. 10, 10 less, so it's fine. Moving on down here, it's, it's mainly for the rest of our group. Moving on down here, though, we are running dual daggers for the extra crit. This is going to be... Um, this is ideal i mean hands down you want to run dual daggers infused with a poison damage enchant and a absorb stamina enchant this is going to help you sustain even more like you won't run out of resources very much you'll look like you are but then all of a sudden they'll shoot right back up as soon as you pot, use a pot it allows you to keep your pot and sustain is really what it does all right now moving on to the bow because this is where things get different because I am running a Maelstrom bow with this, guys. Uh, Maelstrom is, <laughs> hands down, the best kind of bow you can get. The problem is, is that when you swap bars, you do lose the powerful assault. Um, two pieces, the weapon damage and the five piece. But you're not using any support skills for healing on the back bar. Or assault skills, except for Caltrops. And this will keep, you can still keep this up because this lasts for 15 seconds. So... If you can keep a good rotation, you can keep this up 100%. So, really good. But on that back bar, you really want that Maelstrom Bow because you want that extra damage that it deals. And, yeah, it's crazy. So, moving on now to the skills. Starting with the, the uh, class skills, make sure you get all your racial passives. This is really, really, really important. Or class passives. It is really important, guys. Even if you're not using skills from there, it can still play into your uh, character to some degree. Because there is a skill that I do float on the back bar, so I can put Frost Cloak on there. And this gives me a little bit more extra uh, physical and spell resist. Just a little bit. Uh, moving on to the weapons, dual wield, you want all the passives. You can go two-handed with this build if you want. Uh, if you do go two-handed, I would suggest using Uppercut, cleave with the ultimate gen and executioner strike in place of the rending slashes uh shrouded daggers and deadly cloak <clears throat> but you don't do as much damage bow you want all the passives of course going on the armor light armor you want the top three passives not very important but it's still you want that 511 setup so we may as well take them medium armor you want all the passives and heavy armor you want the top three World skills, you can be a vampire or a werewolf with this, but I advise against it because you just don't have time for it. Uh, but with the world, you definitely want soul summons and soul lock. Soul summons mainly for the fact that you get a revive with the soul stone every hour. Fighter's guild, you want all the passives. You don't need skill tracker or this, but it's it, at least get the top two, these two here. Uh, Slayer and Banish the Wicked. If you do a lot of questing and it intimidating presence mages guild persuasive will just requesting moving on to undaunted you just need the undaunted command undaunted metal and then moving on to alliance assault you want resolving vigor you have to have this on your bar for powerful assault and then caltrops on the back bar 
Moving on to the, the racial passives, the reason I say Wood Elf is because they get 21% stam recovery and no other race gets that. When you incorporate all the other stam recovery this build has, just from this and CP, we have 35% increase in stam recovery. When you add in medium armor, that's another 20% uh, on top of it. And then you add in the Warden's 10%. And in total, you end up with something like 65% uh, stamina recovery. It's ridiculous. The uh, resist affliction is pretty nice in some dungeons. Getting that max stamina, getting that poison disease resistance, but gaining immunity to poison and disease status effects is really good. And then moving on down here, we do get the stealthy passive, which doesn't really help out in PvE. Alchemy, medicinal use, and provisioning gourmet con connoisseur. Now, I gotta take that back. The Wood Elf stealthy passive does help in PvE when you're playing like assassin stuff, like Dark Brotherhood. Now, to the skills. Starting with the front bar, we do have Rending Slashes. Rending Slashes deals more damage up front than Blood Craze, and Blood Craze does heal you, but this also puts a small CC on your enemies, reducing their movement speed, and it does really good damage over time. Next ability we have is Subterranean Assault, and as you can see, this does damage like you would not believe. <laughs> and on top of that, it does do Major Fracture to multiple targets. So any targets hit by this will get Major Fracture applied to them, so it helps your Stam DPS bring them down a little easier. Next on our bar, we do have Shrouded Daggers, and this can bounce between targets. It has a small CC, does really good damage. It does grant you major brutality, but don't worry about that. You're getting it from your pots mostly. And then next up, we do have Deadly Cloak. This is here to proc our enchants. Because of the new changes to um, PvE and PvP, like how enchants work with dual wield, you no longer proc the, the enchants on dual wield on rending slashes. It still works that way on, on, D, on PTS, though. Um, but not on P on on live So on live the damage is going to be skewed a little because I'm still going to be proccing both enchants with rending slashes But here our light attack weaves with deadly cloak is going to keep our um, enchants proccing both the Absorbed stamina and the poison can proc off of deadly cloak if they're not on cooldown Next up, we do have Resolving Vigor. We have this here, not just for the heal, but to proc that powerful assault on us to give us that minor courage, like I said. You want this to cast this every rotation, no matter what. Because if you go and skip a rotation, you will lose powerful assault. So it's best to keep it up every rotation. Now, I do something a little different with this build and this rotation. I do apply this. As soon as I apply this, I throw a Shrouded Daggers, Light Attack, Shrouded Daggers, Light Attack, Shrouded Daggers, Light Attack, Deadly Cloak, then Powerful Assault, because the reason I do that is because I, I want to get my damage up as high as I can. The next skill we have here, though, is Flawless Stonebreaker. We have this here for the damage it does and the increased weapon damage this will be our main ultimate we will spam this every time it's on cool uh, it comes off a of cooldown next on our bar is or on our back bar is poison injection this is great damage up front great damage over time and on top of it it deals 260 percent more damage to enemies under 50 percent health it's kind of like an execute but it's really minor but it does do a lot of damage and then we do have endless hail where we get a volley of, of arrows down on our enemies and it does do a lot of damage because we are using the Maelstrom Bow. Next up, we do have Razor Caltrops. This is really good for damage over time. It also is a great CC. And then the uh, initial hit explodes and does damage. So it, does, it hits in an AoE type ma manner to multiple targets. Really good. And then next we have Green Lotus. We have this here because it does offer some group support. If you wanted to swap it out and take Trap Beast, change the main gear set. Change that Griffin to something else. Because then you, you don't need the Minor Force from Griffin. The only reason why I use the Green Lotus though is because this is a support build. So support is healing and debuffing. We do a debuffing uh, with our Subterranean Assault. 
we do group buffs from powerful assault and then we do some healing through green lotus and vigor it's it works out really well next up we do have bull niche we have this here because we want that stamina return it does grant us major sorcery and major brutality but we mainly want it here for the stamina return it really helps out it helps us sustain really easy and then last but not least you can put whatever you want here i just put in enchanted forest because it's a nice ultimate it's a great for group support it has a heal a very strong heal and if you heal your allies under 50 percent health you get 20 ultimate back so and it's a super cheap ultimate all right so now that you guys have seen the skills let's move on to cp starting with the red tree i did some adjustments here that's why it's still flickering uh, we have 81 into Ironclad. This reduces damage taken from direct damage attacks by 64%. We have two into Medium Armor Focus just to give us a little bit more. And I didn't have any other place to put them, so figured why not put it into here. Moving on over here, we have 56 into Hardy. This reduces your damage taken from physical attacks by 12%. 56 into Elemental Defender, reducing Flame Frost, Shock, and Magic damage by 12%. And then we have 56 into Thick Skin, reducing our damage taken from damage over time effects by 20%. We actually have a 32%, which is nice. So, Moving on over here, we have 19 into Quick Recovery. The only reason why we have 19 points into here is to get the Field Physician, which only takes 10 but I figured 5% healing received would be good for me. Um, and then this allowing us to resurrect another player and reducing our damage by 15% is really good. All right, moving on to the green tree. We have 56 in the Warlord. This reduces our break free cost by 20%. 23 into Sprinter, reducing our sprint cost by 14%. And then moving on to the middle tree here. We have 76 in the Mooncalf, increasing our stamina recovery by 14%. 43 into Tenacity, increasing our Stamina and Magicka, or, yeah, our Fully Charged Heavy Attacks by 15%, or 10%. Now, here's the thing, guys. The reason I put 76 in here, not 75, if you get a flat number in any of these, and it's not maxed out, and you're not capped at 100 points in here, at any time you get a flat number in any of these increases, you have to take it one point higher because if it just says 14%, it's actually three point or 13.99%, so it's still only 13%. That's why we take it up one more point to get that 14.07. I don't know why they did it that way. It's, it's really lame, but that's how it works. Moving on, we have 56 in a tumbling. This reduces our dodge roll cost by 20%, and 16 in a shadow ward just to give us a little bit of block cost, because we do block so reducing that and saving some stamina saves us moving on we do have 43 into blessed to increase our healing done this just helps with our vigor and our yeah and our lotus a little bit mainly our vigor and then moving on to the middle tree we have 16 into physical weapon expert this gives us a 10 percent increase in light attack damage and then we have 40 in the master at arms which is really good because this increases our damage done with direct damage attack by 16 percent Moving on to this tree, though, this is where things get really great. We have 50, 56 in the Mighty, increasing physical poison disease damage by 10%. 56 in Thaumaturge, the increasing our uh, damage done with damage over time effects by 20%. And then 56 in the Precise Strikes, uh, increasing our critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities by 20%. So our Vigor will crit heal and get 20% boost, but our damage itself... We actually have an 80% damage on crits because of the um, Griffin set in this. So, really good. And then I put three into piercing because I had three points left over. May as well put it into something that I'm going to use. So, All right. Now, I'm going to show you guys a quick thing real quick. So, this is with Frost Cloak. This is without Caltrops, but I did want to show you this. Well, our critical damage is coming in at 70%. It doesn't count the Griffin set for some reason here. I don't know why, but we did have a 54% critical weapon critical most of the time. We did have 4,400 weapon damage with a 9,788 um, on the physical pin at max. Minimum 6,867 uh, 6, and then 4,125. So still over 4K weapon damage, which is really good. And if you look down here, our Endless Hail does really good damage. Shrouded Daggers was doing good damage. 
poison damage uh, weapon was doing really good damage all of them were doing great damage and if you look here uh, shrouded daggers was hitting upwards of 16k and then 7k on poison weapon all together like I said really good poison injection really powerful Selene's was really powerful and subterranean assault is really powerful unfortunately you can't spam subterranean assault so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the rotation first thing you're gonna want to do is get your buffs up all of them including your vigor and then I'll go out let me go to the other skelly so I can do this rotation better so as long as you see that you have the little symbol down here where it's uh it looks like the person all buffed up that's your powerful assault so let me go ahead and do that again <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and buff up again pop your vigor as soon as you pop your vigor flop swap bars poison injection light attack endless hail light attack caltrops light attack swap bars Renning slashes light attack subterranean assault light attack Shrouded Daggers, Light Attack, Blade Cloak, Shrouded Daggers, Light Attack, Shrouded Daggers, Light Attack, and then Vigor, Swap Bars, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Light Attack, Cow Drops, and then Rebuff. You want to keep those buffs going, but you, at, the, at the same time, you also want to keep your pots going, because it's okay if you lose the buffs. The pots you don't want to lose, so, all right. Now, I'm going to try to do this rotation. It, it was a complicated one to create to begin with. Um, but let me, let me do this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do Vigor first. My thing, this, this. Oops. Uh, light attack. And you still have to throw in some heavy attacks in here. Usually I'll do it after that. So I can do this a few times more and then I'll bigger swap bars. I keep it in the wrong button there. Yeah, I screwed up really bad there.
I didn't have this much trouble before. Oh man, I'm having some serious stamina issues. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish him off real quick. There we go. Alright, so 21,000, I know, not phenomenal DPS, but for dungeons, it's great. For normal trials, it's good. Veteran trials, you know, because of all the things that you'll have from everyone else and everything, you're looking at about 24 to 32k DPS if you can pull the rotation off really well. But it's still not bad. 21,295. Um, still really good. And we're still getting really good stuff here anyways. And then if you go down here and you look, just so you guys can see, Minor Force was up 98% of the time. So we were proccing that Griffin set and keeping up 98% of the time. But it wasn't showing over here. This only shows from the one thing. It'll show Trap Beast, but it won't show the Griffin's Minor Force for some reason on the critical damage. We usually get a base 50% crit damage. We get 20% from our CP and then another 10 from Minor Force, and it's not showing that. But it does show it here. So, really good on that Minor Force. Major Brutality was up 100%. Uh, minor Toughness was up 100%. So that's another thing that's really good, is you do give that Minor Toughness out to your groups. Powerful Assault, not up as not quite as good as I'd like because it was it's really hard to manage um, for me to manage this rotation, but I'm getting better at it because I am playing this on here and I almost play the same thing on live except I use um, Hunting's Rage. But you can use the um, Griffin set which is better. Moving on down here though, if you look, our Endless Hail was doing really good DPS in fact, it did a, a million damage on its own, so that's really good. Razor Caltrops, not too bad, not too shabby. Shrouded Daggers, still really good, especially as a spammable. And then if you look over here, Poison uh, Weapon was going off quite a bit. <coughs> Our Light Attacks were doing okay damage, not too bad. Uh, Absorb Stamina was doing really well. Ridding Slashes, not too bad, not too shabby. Poison Injection, again, really good. Selene's was hitting like a bus. And then Subterranean Assault just cranks out that damage. Look at that. 20k on crits. Oh, man. Um, the problem really, though, is it sits in here. As you can see, our, our drain was higher than our regen. I think it was because I was doing too many dagger uh, spams on Shrouded Dagger. I think two spams on it would be fine. It would probably help you sustain better. And you could probably keep the same rotation going. So... But that's it for the build, guys. That is the Bard. It is a kind of group support DPS kind of thing. Kind of like your standard D&D &D Bard from Dungeons & Dragons. They, they work very similar. They do do damage. They do a lot of group support. And this just shows like what they can pull off. So, um, But yeah, I really like this build. It's something I really love playing. I play it on live, like I said. And I can't get enough of it. It's it probably hands down my favorite build to play right now. But that's it for the build, guys. Hope you guys like it. If you do, hit that like button. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.